Hi folks, John with the Wingman 115 channel. Thank you so much for checking in. If you have been a viewer or subscriber for the past couple of years, you know that I just have a passion for archery. If you follow along on my social media, I pretty much post something a couple times a week shooting in the backyard range. Well, today we're gonna be talking about ILF bows. I recently, in the past year or so, have gotten into ILF. I've got the ILF bug and I wanna share it with you. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna break down the concept of ILF. I'll give you a little bit of history behind that. And then we'll talk about some of the practical applications of the ILF system and see if this is gonna be a fit for you. Folks, it doesn't get any better than this. We're out here in the woods, we're doing archery. You're with me, the video starts now. So today I'm gonna to be showcasing two ILF bows that are distinctly different in design, but they all function the same, trust me. First off, we're gonna be talking about the Samic Discovery. This is a aluminum riser. It's a machined aluminum riser. I'm running uh, Trad Tech limbs on there, the uh, Black Max 2. It's in 45 pound, have an elevated rest on there with a plunger. I use this as a target bow, messing around 3D shoots and such. We're gonna be talking about this one in detail in a little bit. And I recently did a review on this bow. This is the Southwest Archery Stingray. Just a beautiful traditional looking bow. The riser on this is just stunning. And Southwest uses their own ILF limbs. This is also a 45 pound bow. I've been going with the same poundage so I can shoot the same arrows so it doesn't break the bank. Uh, happen to get different arrows for a bunch of different bows. It's already crazy as it is. So we're gonna deep dive into talking about both these bows. I'll cut away, we'll show them up close, some of the features, and then we'll get to shooting, and then I'll come back and talk about the ILF system with you folks. So you're probably asking yourself, John, what is the ILF system? Well, the ILF system is this. It's called International Limb Fittings. And it was originally designed by Hoyt probably about 30 years or more ago. It since has taken off. There is just a whole market designed around ILF risers and ILF limbs. The great thing about it is that you can mix or match a bow, and what I mean about that is length of riser and length of limb, and pretty much customize a bow for you, whatever your needs are in uh, the archery genre. And we're gonna delve into that. First off, let's talk about different styles of bows. Let's talk about Olympic bows, and if we're gonna be doing uh, target bows. Now, those risers are gonna vary in length, and I'll show you some photos here of some of those bows. 
they're gonna vary in length with a riser length of 21, 23, and 25 inches. Now, for folks that are into 3D target shooting, into hunting, the risers are gonna be a lot shorter. And for those bows, primarily, they're gonna be 15 inch, 17 inch, and 19 inch risers. This one happens to be a 17 inch riser because I have it set up as a 3D archery and a hunting rig. Now, let's talk about limbs and the different sizes of limbs. Limbs also come in three different sizes. Now, the limb length is gonna depend on your draw. So let's break it down. If you have a under 26 inch draw, you're gonna go with short limbs. Now, depending on the size of the riser, the length of the bow could vary between 56, 58, and 60 inches. Now, if you have a draw length of 26 and a half to 29 and a half inches, then you would probably need medium length limbs. Medium length limbs, on depending on your riser, is gonna give you a 58, a 60, or a 62 inch bow. If you have a draw length of over 29 and a half inches, you're gonna go with long limbs. Now with long limbs, that's gonna give you a bow length of 60, 62, or 64 inch bow. So as you can see, depending on the size of the riser and the length of the limbs, you can customize a bow depending on your draw length and on your needs of what you're gonna do with that bow. Let's talk about setting up your ILF bow. Now, the biggest issue and concern that I get is I have a takedown bow, but I don't wanna mess with the tools to take a limb on and off and doing all that. Well, with the ILF system, you, once you have the system set up, you don't need tools to remove and replace the limbs. They just snap on and they snap off. They're held in place by the preload of the string when the bow is braced. That's one awesome thing about the ILF system. Also, let's talk about setting up a bow. Now, here you have lateral adjustment screws on both sides, and you have the limb bow where you can do the tiller adjustment. You can customize this bow and dial it in to where that string and those limbs are perfectly tracked in line with the shelf of your bow or the plunger or the rest, whatever system that you're using, you can straighten that string out and just dial it in perfect. And you can also adjust the poundage up and down 5%, which is really neat. If you're shooting Mediterranean style, split fingered, it's gonna be a little bit different pull on these limbs than if you shoot three under. With that said, you can adjust these tiller bolts to your style of shooting so you can really dial in these limbs to get that perfect arrow flight coming off the shelf that's just going to help you have a more accurate shot and better arrow flight. Let's take a look at my target ILF bow. First off, you're going to notice it's a little bit different. I have an elevated rest and I have a plunger on there and the shelf is cut past center. So what that does, that allows that plunger to come out where I can really customize this whole system to really dial in my shot to get that perfect alignment of the arrow coming off that rest. And that is one neat thing about the ILF system is just the adjustability, whether it's with the limb bolts, the lateral adjustment, the plunger, and also the grip on certain bows. You can replace the grips to fit your style of gripping the bow. So there is a lot of options that are involved in the ILF system. Now, one thing I noticed when I jumped into the ILF genre is there's a lot of manufacturers that are out there producing a lot of stuff. And the standard out there is almost like a gentleman's agreement standard. There really isn't a uh, pattern or some sort of diehard schematic on this system because Hoyt never released that to the general public. 
So sometimes you might get limbs that fit a little tight. They might fit a little loose. Um, it depends on the manufacturer. But the great thing about this system is, say I want to shoot a longbow. They have ILF longbow limbs. If I want to shoot a recurve, obviously they have the recurve limbs. If I want to shoot 30 pound target indoor, I can do that. If I want to go hunting in the fall, I can shoot 45, 50, 55 pound, 60 pound and up, depending on what you like to do. That is the great thing about this system. You can personalize it for your wants, needs, and desires. So that has been a quick breakdown of the ILF system. My advice to you would be this. Go to your local archery shop or go to a range. If somebody's shooting an ILF bow, get out there and uh, ask if you could shoot it. If you're at a shop, ask if you could try it out. Folks are gonna be more than glad to let you try out their system because we wanna grow the sport. Get out there, try it out. It may be for you, it may not be for you, but that's okay. It's still archery and that's the main thing about it. Getting folks out there shooting bows and growing the sport so this sport continues for years to come. Folks, with that said, this has been just a taste diving in to the ILF system. If you like these type of videos, let me know down in the comments below. We'll make more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Take care, folks.